Right, we're here with uh, Andre Winner, UFC fighter. Thanks very much for agreeing to talk to us. No problem. Excellent. So um, you actually fight in the, in the States, don't you? Um, well, the UFC is, is worldwide, so um, you know, I mean, wherever they um, ask me to fight, I'll be there. So I fought in um, the UK before. I've also fought in like, places like Las Vegas, um, Charlotte, Boston. And I, my last fight was in Germany. So. It, it takes me around the world. So, do you travel on your own, or do you travel? Is there a group of you that go around? Um, I normally go with my corner team. Um, so there'll be a couple of us going out there. Um, obviously, it depends on their schedules. Like, I'll bring my brother out with me, um, so he has to get time off work. But um, for the most part, I'll take my coaches and uh, my family. Now, you're from Leicester originally, yes. is that right? Okay. Yes. So, uh, how did you get into UFC? Did you start through sort of clubs like Nirvana Boxing Club, going through the ranks and things like that? Yeah, actually, I did. Um, I, used to, I was just saying to um, Jermaine that I remember when I used to come here when I was like 19 years old. I'm 29 years old now, so um, obviously it brought back a few memories. Um, I've always been into um, sports and martial arts and combat sports in particular. Um, I started off with karate and um, I, I slowly moved into the boxing, and uh, from there it was just a progression of just just the appreciation of all the different types of sports. And I mean, I was always interested in. Um, the, the kind of like the wrestling side of things and um, seeing how it, how it all got put together and I remember I, watching, I was watching the UFC um, like back in 95 so um, and I mean I can always remember the guys that fought on there and I always thought to myself wow I wonder if I could do it and um, just so happened um, there was a guy in Leicester Nathan Leverton a Leicester shoot fighters and um, he kind of took me under his wing and I mean, I'm not, I'm not really is that what first attracted you to UFC? Was it the combination of all the different things that you tried or you know, the, the yeah, skill involved? Yeah, de most definitely. I mean, there's more to a fight than just being able to grapple or just being able to punch. That's just one aspect of a fight. So um, I, th I think um, MMA really gives you a true understanding of who's the best competitor. Because, like I said, it, it's not the guy with the biggest punch or the biggest kick or the best grapple. You, you have to be able to, to do it all. So um, It also looks very tactical and sort of very, a lot of strategy is, in there. It's, it's like it, identifying mean, when your, your opponent's tired or, look, or noticing a weakness and then kind of exploiting it. Well, definitely, especially with um, a sport where you get as many aspects as you do. I mean, it's hard to be... Um, great in all of those aspects. I think now you'll find, um, especially with MMA, um, a lot of people cross training and, and things like that. I mean, originally the UFC started out kind of like um, there was a family called the Gracie Family, and um, they kind of invented it to um, challenge people because they believe that their um, fighting system was the best and it couldn't be beaten, kind of thing. And um, obviously, in time, people um, started training what they trained, and because they could hang with it. And because um, the Gracies didn't, weren't really known for striking, then you'd get like strikers that could come in, or even wrestlers who had a good wrestling base and didn't know the submissions. But when they started training it, then they could deal with it. And then, you know what I mean, the game's kept evolving since then. So um, it's, it, it's a bit crazy, but yeah, um, it, there's a lot of technique that goes into it. I mean, I'm, I'm um, better known for my striking. But um, obviously I have to train everything, but if, if I were to fight somebody and I knew he was a really good grappler, um, very good on the ground, then I, I, I'd want to keep it standing. So I'd look at his fights and see what I could do to stop his takedown, to keep it, keep it on my feet. And so if like playing to your strengths, down, like playing yeah, to your strengths. Yeah. Obviously. So, um, now the great yeah. thing about the Gloves for Life programme, yeah. um, and the reason why we're here supporting them today, Citizens Eye and the Wave Young People's Newspaper, is the fact that not only is it about boxing, it's also about things like nutrition and they're getting a first aid certificate and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I mean, I was talking to uh, Jermaine Smiles earlier about his, uh, his sort of average training day and, yeah. and maybe you know what he eats and stuff like that it's not and it's really important isn't it almost definitely i mean if you're not getting the right nutrition then you're not going to be able to train as well as you'd like to and you're not going to be able to perform and make the improvements that you need to so nutrition is a big part of it with um, cutting weight or putting on weight or anything like that and you, you need a, you need the energy with the right nutrition it's not just about eating rubbish it's about eating the right kind of foods to give you the right amount of energy to get you through the day now are you it is a long day when you train so as for UFC, I mean, do you, do you train specifically for stamina or for strength or a combination of both? Um, it's, it's a combination. What I need to be, I need to be really ana um, anaerobically fit. Um, boxing, it's a, it's a bit more aerobic, but um, I'd say MMA is a little more anaerobic, especially with the wrestling, because what will happen... You, you, you'll get into a clinch or you'll get into a wrestle and you'll get a big kind of like energy dump because you're using a lot of tension. Mm. 
and then um, when you go back to punching, you know what I mean? you, you, your arms are um, built up with um, lactic acid. So you, you have to get used to training through those kind of barriers and being able to explode when you need to, and then be able, be able to relax when you needed to. So, so and the other thing is with um, boxing, the um, bouts are a lot longer. Mm. So for instance, you get the three-minute rounds, but it can go over 12 rounds. So you need that. I mean, you need that aerobic fitness. Whereas in MMA, it's three rounds, but they are five-minute rounds. But it's more of like a fast-paced burst, mm. and you know, I mean, you're done in 15 minutes, no matter what. So where, where, where you want to next? You got a fight? Where do you travel to? Any idea where you're fighting? Do you know in advance, or you just kind of turn up and? No, um, you'll know in advance. The UFC will let me know. I did ask for um, mid-March. I was hoping for that. But um, they've just had a merger um, with another company. They're like their um, brother or sister company called the WEC. And so um, there's a load of fighters and we're all wanting to fight. So, I mean, there's only so many shows that you can put on. Yeah. So, um, unfortunately, I'll probably have to wait till April or something like that. But it's, it's, it's kind of like um, a blessing at the same time because it's given me a chance to... Um, go out there, train with um, some good people and um, improve on my game. I mean, I've had the opportunity um, to go out to Montreal to train with George St. Pierre and his team. He's a welterweight UFC champ and, you know, I mean, he's one of the greatest fighters in MMA of all time. Um, another guy I had the pleasure to train with was um, Roger Gracie and um, he's probably like um, probably the greatest grappler ever. So, I mean, if you're just talking in boxing terms, Roger Grace is like a uh, Manny Pacquiao or Floyd Mayweather and for me to go and meet a guy like that and to get some training with him was a real blessing. Same with George and even the guys I trained with, Paul Daly, Dan Hardy, Ross Pearson, there's a lot of good guys out there and um, especially with the UK and the MMA scene, I think we're really coming through now. For a long time, I mean a lot of people in the UK didn't know much about MMA and um, it was kind of like uh, an American thing or Brazilian and you know what I mean, um, the UK wasn't really too well known for it, but now we've got some really good fighters coming through and I, I'm really proud to be a part of that. Andre, thank you very much for agreeing to talk to us and good luck with your next fight. Thank you very much.